Hi, I'm Gwendolyn with iFixit, and today we have a very special guest in our studio. This is David Hoyt. He is our resident guru for drones. This right. is awesome. I am so excited <laughs> that you came in today, and you're going to tell us a little bit about not just building drones, but uh, repairing them, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Now, I know they're awesome, and they're addictive to fly. They're a lot of fun, yeah. But tell us how you got into them. So I started flying airplanes when I was in high school, and uh, when I got to college, I didn't have a runway, so I figured, well, it'd be cool to have a helicopter. The problem with helicopters is that they have really big blades, and they're scary and dangerous, so that was about the time that multi-rotor drones were coming out, and okay. I figured vertical takeoff would be a lot of fun to play around with. Did you start with a kit, or did you build your own? I started with a kit to build my own, kind of like this one. Okay. Um, I started with the hexacopter version of this. This mm -hmm. is the F450 frame. I started with the F550. So how many have you built yourself since you started? Sure, I've got about five drones at the moment. Um, okay. They range from some, some as small as this one to okay. stuff as big as probably the size of this table. Whoa, yeah. and what do you do with something this, that size? The money maker right now is definitely flying cameras. Someday they'll be delivering packages. All right. but for the time being, cameras are where it's at. So I'm guessing that crashes are just part of drone life. That's it funny. happens, I'm sure. <laughs> what is a great tool to have on hand, or maybe tools, uh, to just keep with you while you're flying, just in case something happens? Yeah, so we've got sort of your top five tools that you'd have on hand at any, at any time you're flying. Um, with crashes, the big thing is you wanna have spare parts on hand. Everyone crashes and it's not a big deal. And so if you've got the spare parts um, already available to you, you can fix it a lot faster than waiting for, for shipping to arrive at your front Excellent. door. As far as tools go, um, certainly probably the most common one are your hex drivers. Nice. I've got a two millimeter right here and a 2.5 millimeter. Okay. Um, these are really common. You do you sometimes use a 3.0, but 2, 2 and 2.5 yeah. are and definitely And these are the small, we can fit these in a bag. Great. Um, let's see, we've got our mounting tape. This is 3M double-sided sticky foam mounting tape. Mm, um, it's okay. got adhesive on both sides of it. You can cut it exactly to the right size that you like. And then cool. you've also got your, um, just a pair of like wire snippers or these are called dykes. Um, and they're great for snipping zip ties or other hard to get to places. Not wires. Though. Exactly, you don't want to <laughs> cut, if you're cutting a zip tie, you don't want to accidentally cut a wire. Right. So these are really precise cutters. Nice. Um, I really like okay. those a lot. Cool. <clears throat> At the field, you want to have a couple of spare zip ties. These are great for mounting down anything that might come yeah. loose. Um, so we've got two sizes here. There's the eight inch zip tie and the four inch. Um, you use a lot of the eight, the eight inches, but um, the four inch ones are great for really small components as okay. well. Also, we use quite a bit of Velcro. Um, you've got your fuzzy really? and your um, sort of rough side. Um, these are the hooks and these are what they hook onto. Um, you use a lot of Velcro with your battery packs. Gotcha. Um, as far as monitoring your batteries go, uh, this, this uh, digital battery capacity checker makes it really, really easy to do. You plug it in and it gives you a really easy to see readout. Um, you can check the voltage of any of the cells that are inside the battery pack, as well as you get a really quick readout of the entire capacity yeah. um, if That's it's charged crazy. or if it's discharged. And then last oh. but not least, we've also got a 12 meter, millimeter uh, hex wrench that we're gonna be using today to nice. replace the, the propellers on this Phantom. With, the, with multi-rotor drones, you've got propellers that spin um, clockwise as well as propellers that spin counterclockwise. Okay. Uh, to loosen them, you actually spin the nut, you hold the motor uh, steady, and then you spin okay. the nut the, the direction opposite the propeller spin direction. So this propeller spins uh, counterclockwise, so we're gonna spin the nut clockwise, and that loosens it up. And uh, normally it's lefty loosey righty tighty, right? right? But this one is one of the counter rotating ones. So to okay. tighten this down, you actually spin it to the left. Yeah, okay. exactly. Um, so just double check that your um, the concavity of your rotor blade okay. is sort of um, concave facing the ground. So um, just look at when it's going to spin. Make sure it's going to be pushing air down. Um, and Perfect. definitely don't install them upside down. That is super easy. Yeah. I think anyone can do it, and I am so ready to see these fly. Good, good. Which one are we taking out? We're gonna take this one out, and yes. uh, we're gonna actually get some video from the gimbal out down here with the GoPro attached to it. Excellent, yeah, all right. Yeah, you'll be impressed with the, the, the quality and the, the smoothness of the video. David, this is so awesome. Thank you so much for coming in and showing us your drones and how to repair them. If you're interested in drone repair, check it out at ifixit.com, or we'll have the link below in the description.